Go, hello y'all, Prophet David Taylor here. Sunday, March 24th, 2.30 p.m. Let's jump right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for another opportunity, God, to be a part of your program, a part of your kingdom, a part of your life, oh God. And we love you, God, because you are a good God. And we love you, Jesus, because you are a good Savior and a good Lord, and you're the good shepherd, and you are worthy of praise, God. We don't want to serve false gods. We don't want to serve idols, God. We just want to serve you because we love you with a childlike heart and a childlike faith. So I just ask you to be in the midst of this broadcast, oh God. I surrender my mind, my heart, my lips, my tongue, my hands, my brain, everything, oh God, to your service and your use and let your will be done and breathe through me so that you might be glorified and the saints might be edified and the demons might be terrified. We thank you for it and we believe you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the true and the living God, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> let me give you uh, today's prophetic word. Uh, and then I will give you uh, a prophecy, a prophetic word to be released. And then we'll dive into the scripture. Okay? Today's prophetic word is... Oh, I'm sorry, that was a message coming in. <laughs> Today's prophetic word is <clears throat> perfect sync. I need to close that off because that's distracting me and I don't need that right now. Today's prophetic word is perfect sync. Okay? Hey there, blessings to you too, Sally. Uh, today's prophetic word is perfect sync. Now let me give you the prophetic word the Lord gave me to release unto you. And here it is. For behold, my people, I have brought you into a season and an opportunity to get in perfect sync with me. In the days and the weeks to come, I'm going to be giving you specific instructions about every area spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, vocationally, and financially. Therefore, my people, I release unto you the spirit of intimacy. Let the fire and the breath of God blow on you. And it'll bring you into a new place of intimacy, a place you've never been before. And you'll learn how to call on me in things great and small. And I will show you great and mighty things that you have never seen, things that you know not, including the miracle. Uh, there it is, good. I don't know why that happens, y'all, but you know, I always put the Periscope link in the YouTube link. Um, I, I don't know why Facebook is taking a freezing, because I've got new internet and everything. So it's just a devil, so I have to rebuke it every time that happens. So uh, I think it froze in the middle of my prophetic word for Facebook, so I'm going to give it again. Here it is. For behold, my people, I brought you into a season and an opportunity for you to get in perfect sync with me. In the days and the weeks to come, I'm going to release unto you specific instructions for every area of your life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, vocationally, financially. Therefore, I release unto you, my, my people, a spirit of intimacy. Let the fire and the breath of God blow on you, and it will take you into a new level of intimacy with me you've never had before, and you will learn to call on me with things great and small, and I will show you great mighty things that you know not, including the miracle realm. For I am the bridegroom, and I am ready to go in to my bride, ready to move forward with those that are filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And as you get the, uh, take the opportunity to get in a perfect sync with me, I will show you levels that you never knew existed, says the Spirit of the living God. Hasa. Amen and amen. So I hope you caught it that time, Facebook, because I know that was that stutter there. So let me get in the Word and break that down. Let me help you understand all that, what I just said, okay? Or what the Holy Spirit said through me. We're going to start in uh, Revelation chapter 2, 
verse 8. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. Okay, Revelation is the last book in the Bible and the last book in the New Testament. So all you have to do is go to the end of your Bible, Revelation chapter 2. We're going to go look at chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there, but I'm going to show you how that's relevant to the prophetic word the Holy Spirit just released. Okay? I want you to notice something about Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 is where we get our grades from Jesus. That is the Lord in his re-glorified form right now, the form he's in right now with eyes that burn like a flame of fire, sharp two-edged sword come out of his mouth, feet like fine polished brass, Okay, voice like the sound of many waters, thunder and lightning, hair white like wool. That's what Jesus looks like now. You don't see too many pictures in that because sometimes Christian iconography is stuck on the cross. Now, don't misunderstand what I just said. We're supposed to honor the cross, but that's not where the Lord is now. He's on the right hand of the Father, okay? And he's re-glorified. He's become fully God again. So Revelation 2 and 3 is Jesus speaking to the churches now giving us our grades, the Lord telling us what he thinks about the lives that we're living. The reason that's relevant to that prophetic word is because uh, when you read Revelation 2 and 3, you will notice that the Lord has good things to say about every church, and then he has things where he has issues where he says, but I have this against you because you have done this, so you need to deal with this. And then the last church, he doesn't have anything good to say. But I want you to notice the church at Smyrna. I want you to notice the Lord didn't have one bad thing to say, okay? He said, these are the words of him are first and last, who died and came to life again. Uh, I know your afflictions, your poverty, your rich slander, uh, but they're of the church of Satan. Don't be afraid. Uh, specific instructions about persecution. Be faithful, okay? And I'll give you the crown of life. He didn't have anything bad to say. You know what that means? That means that that church was so in sync with Jesus, he did not have one word of criticism criticism, and that means it's possible, okay? It's possible to serve the Lord in such a way until he does not have one word of criticism about you. I know some of y'all have never heard that your entire life. You've been going to church for 30 years, and nobody ever told you that, because many times in our religious backgrounds, what we get is fussology. You know what fussology is? It ain't theology. It's fussology, where they just take some scriptures and beat you over the head, <laughs> where they just make you feel like you ain't never living right enough. Where they make you feel like, you know, you can't ever uh, uh, be pleasing enough in the Lord's sight. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches in these verses that the people in Smyrna were living so well. The Lord knew about the slander around them. And, but those people were from the church of Satan. He told them not to be afraid. He said, the devil's going to give you some persecution. But it's only going to last 10 days. The Lord said, be, be faithful. He didn't have one bad thing to say. That means it's possible. I know you've never heard that. I know some of you, it doesn't mean, you know, that you don't have a sin. You've got to confess your sins every day, obviously. So that's not what I'm talking about. But it is possible to be in sync with the Lord to where the Lord doesn't have one bad thing, one bad thing to say about your life. It's possible. I know some of y'all have never heard that. It's possible. It's possible to be in sync with Jesus, to be doing what the Lord told you to do, to where he does not have one word of criticism because he said it to the church in Smyrna. He did not have one bad thing to say. Right? I know. I know that's uh, blowing your brain up. He also, as in the prophetic word, he gave him specific instructions. Now, those of you that are new to the prophetic or those of you that are flowing in the prophetic, I want to challenge you to get into a level of specific instructions from God. Sometimes you hear these prophecies that say, oh, I've brought you into a season of prosperity and I'm going to bless everything you put your hands to. So, you know, love me and serve me and obey me. And it, like, that's very general. Nothing wrong with that. 
Nothing wrong with that. But that's very general. <clears throat> and sometimes that can apply to anybody. I'm talking about where God says stuff to you like, three days from now, this and this and this is going to happen. And two months from now, this this and this is going to happen. And in the summer, this kind of attack is going to come. So here's how you need to prepare yourself now. Or here's where you need to go. Those are specifics. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, a year's plan to where when 2019 comes in, you go before Jesus and you say, in every quarter, what should I be doing? Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. What's the plan? See, that's specific. So I want to challenge those of you that flow in the prophetic to ask God to take you to that level. Okay? Where you stop living off these general prophecies and say, oh, I'm going to bless you. Oh, I love you. Oh, you're in a season. I mean, we know that, but again, that's very, very general, and that can apply to anybody. What applies to you specifically? Okay? What is God going to have on your plate by the end of March? March has one more week. Do you know what God is going to have in your hand before March ends? Because when April comes, there's going to be some new words, there's going to be some new stuff. You see what I mean? So I challenge you to be specific, because in this verse, the Lord was specific. He said, do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. He's warning them of an attack. He says, I tell you, the devil will put, will put some of you, all of them weren't going, in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution 10 days. That's very specific. That's a week and three days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. The Lord said, sell out, follow me all the way, be faithful until the point of death. Don't hold anything back from me. Serve me, you know, acknowledge you're a Christian no matter what the cost. Okay? And he said, you're going to get a crown of life. Okay? Very specific. Does that, that's what I mean when I say those of you that flow in the prophetic, start seeking the Lord on that level. Now let's go to our next scripture that talks about the second part of that prophecy, you hear me talk about this all the time, Matthew 25. Now, Matthew is the first book in the New Testament, and it's part of what we call the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? First book in the New Testament, okay? Written by Matthew, the former tax collector. He was a tax collector, and then he met the Lord, and then he changed. Okay? Then uh, Matthew, verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, were all, they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man comes. That's Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Now, what does that mean in a practical sense? Because the Lord told a parable, okay? And a parable is a story with a bunch of interwoven meanings, okay? God is teaching you truth in story form, okay? That's what a parable is. What the Lord is saying here relevant to today's prophecy is that if you are a Christian that is not filled with the Holy Ghost, you are foolish, I can't make you understand how many Christians I personally have met. People say that they were saved and born again, but they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is not the same as a rebirth experience. Okay? You get born again, and then you get filled with the Holy Ghost. They're two separate things. They can happen in the same space at the same time. But first you've got to get saved, get born again, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and then you've got to get filled with God's Spirit. Okay? And being filled with the Holy Ghost happens many times as you walk with God. Not just one time. But if you are a Christian and you're actually born again, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, but you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, that means your spirit is empty. That means you're a vessel for God to use, but you're not filled with God. You're not filled with the desires of God, the things of God, the knowledge of God. Okay, you're empty. And that's why people that are saved but ain't Holy Ghost filled, that's why they struggle so much. And that's why they get defeated so much. Because they ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't fill the vessel up. Okay, the Spirit of God brings the power of God. The Spirit of God brings enlightenment. 
The Spirit of God brings grace. The Spirit of God brings conviction. The Spirit of God brings understanding. So many things that come. The Spirit of God brings tongues, a prayer language. The Spirit of God brings visions. The Spirit of God brings the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelical, pastoral, the educational. The Spirit of God brings all those things. Okay? But if you save and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't even know what I'm talking about. That's how you can have people out here talking about, God doesn't make any apostles today. There was the 12 in the Bible, and that was it. Fail. That's not true. Well, there aren't any more prophets today. There were the prophets in the Bible, but there haven't been any more since then. Fail. That ain't true. Only unholy ghost filled people say stuff like that. People say stuff like that because they ain't holy ghost filled. It's entirely possible to be a Christian and not be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay, so when I get to the end of the teaching part of this broadcast, I'm going to show you how to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And those of you that have never been filled, you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost on the spot through the Internet. Okay? All right, so the Lord said that though they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. If you're a Christian, it's foolish not to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Those are saints that are filled with the Holy Spirit because the only way you can stay connected to Jesus is through the Holy Spirit. There is no other way. The Holy Spirit came to earth to connect us to Father and Son. And the Holy Ghost is here to point us to what Jesus is saying. That means if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you've got no idea what the Lord is saying to you now. That's why you have these Christians running out here. They're born again, but they ain't spirit-filled. They just got religion. They just go to church every Sunday, they sing the same old songs, listen to the same old sermon, and go home because they ain't got no Holy Ghost. Okay? At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. If you don't know what that means, a trim lamp means to skim off some of the oil that you can't use and anything that's not combustible and make sure that the wick will burn, get all the excess wax out, make sure your candle will operate properly. Basically, it's what it means to trim a lamp. And then the foolish said, give us of your oil for our lamps have gone out. But the wise said, no. And so while the foolish ones went to town to buy some oil, the bridegroom came and them and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. What does that mean in a practical sense? What that means is that when God is ready to move on to the next phase in your life, in, in a season, in a nation, He's looking for the people that are Holy Ghost filled that were ready for him. Because it says twice in here that you don't know when the Lord's going to come. In other words, whenever the Lord moves into a certain season, whenever God gets ready to do something, you're not going to necessarily know when that's going to happen. And sometimes the Lord will just show up and say, I'm ready to go. Do this. Do that. You know, move. Like God appeared to Abraham. God told Abraham, move. Get up away from your folks and go to a land where I was. He didn't even tell Abraham where he was going. He just said, get up and move. And Abram had to be ready to go. Because many times God just shows up and says, do this now. Well, the only people that are going to be ready to respond when God does that are spirit-filled Christians. People that have been staying in sync with Jesus all along the way. And then one day the Lord says, okay, that's the end of that season. Now it's time for you to move to the next. But if you are not spirit-filled, you're going to be out there running around trying to find some Holy Ghost, trying to go to the store, trying to find it uh, some way because you haven't been practicing flowing in the prophetic. Because if you were Holy Ghost filled, you can't help but flow in the prophetic. God will give you dreams while you sleep to talk to you when you are Holy Ghost filled. And if you are not Holy Ghost filled, the Lord is going to move on to the next season and go in and close the door and you're going to be left behind. Let me give you a practical example. Sometimes God visits people with spouse season. Do you know what spouse season is? Spouse season is when he brings the right person in your life for you to get married. If you're not Holy Ghost filled, you can be in spouse season and completely miss the person you were supposed to be with. I saw some people do that in 2015 because in 2015 it was spouse season. That summer the Lord got some people together for marriage and some people just, well, they just totally missed because they weren't Holy Ghost filled. They were off doing other things. They were out of the will of God. They weren't in sync with Jesus. Same thing happens with money. God can tell you to invest in the stock, stock market. So God can tell you two years prior, put aside a pile of money and don't touch it and not tell you why. Then two years from that day, the Lord will say, now that money you put aside, I want you to invest that in this stock because it's about to blow up. If you're not Holy Ghost filled, you have no idea what I'm talking about because you don't even know the Lord on that level. Because God can set you up 
to give you increase through investment because God knows when that stock is going to grow up and he can tell you. Now, don't go around trying to play Jesus like, you know, he's craps or anything because I told you guys, not a genie. I'm just giving you examples of how the Lord can speak to you when it's a time or season for a certain thing in your life. And if you're not Holy Ghost filled, you're going to miss it. And he's going to move on because he's ready. He's always ready to move on with people that are ready to move on with him. See, if you're not Holy Ghost filled, there are certain things that the Spirit of God has been trying to teach you to get you ready for the next season. That's what non-Holy Ghost people don't understand. That God is not stagnant. God is not staying still. God is doing something every minute, every day, every hour, every uh, week, every month, every quarter, every year, every season, every decade, every generation, every millennium. God is doing something. Okay? You may not see it, and you may not get the full picture, but God is always doing something. And so he, through the Holy Spirit, tells us what he wants us to do in that season. And sometimes what he says is not going to make any sense to you. And sometimes what he says is not going to be to your liking at all. Like when Joseph was in prison, when he got sold into Egypt, and a whole bunch of stuff, just like he told the church of Smyrna, the devil's come to persecute some of y'all. But be that as it may, if you stay faithful, just like he said in the scripture, and you do what he's telling you to do, the Spirit of God is going to teach you and work on your character and work on your faith and work on your prophetic flow and work on the power that you walk in so that when the Lord is ready to come and move you and graduate you to the next thing, you're ready. That's only for Spirit-filled Christians. That's why you can meet those Christians that's been saved 20 and 30 years and they haven't changed a bit. Their church services haven't changed. They sing the same music, and they, they preach the same sermon, and they sit in the same pew because they ain't got no Holy Ghost because there's no way the Holy Ghost is present, and that happens. That's why religious people hate the Holy Ghost. You ever notice that? Go around a bunch of religious people who are in spirit field and start speaking in tongues. Start walking in prophecy. Start moving the apostolic. Start casting out demons. What do they say? They say, well, we don't do that here, All right, because you ain't got no Holy Ghost. It was the religious people that hated Jesus, remember? Because let me give you a principle. Religious people always hate the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is about glorifying Christ, not about glorifying you. The Holy Ghost is about teaching you how to come out of yourself so that you're not focused on carnality or your priorities or what man thinks. So you learn how to refocus this on what God thinks and you learn how to refocus this onto what the Lord is saying. That only comes by the teaching of the Holy Ghost. That's why you've got to be Holy Ghost filled every day of your life and let the Lord work on you and teach you because he's the potter, we're the clay. Because when he's ready to graduate you, let's say you've been praying about money <clears throat> and let's say you've been struggling for two years. You start praying to God in 2017 and it looked like God didn't hear you. But from 2017 to 2019, God was teaching you discipline. God was letting you crash and burn. God was letting you suffer. God was letting you go through some things to teach you discipline, to teach you budgeting, to teach you money management, to teach you not to spend emotionally, to teach you how to get your money on a schedule, to teach you how to be grateful for the money that you have. And God took two years to do that. And it looked like nothing was happening. And all of a sudden, in 2019, boom, God drops some favor and some money on you. Guess what? You're going to know what to do. You know why? Because you stayed in step with the Lord all along the way. The past two years, you stayed in sync with what the Holy Ghost was doing. Even though you didn't like it sometimes, you stayed in step. So then God got ready to drop a whole bunch of money on you. You knew what to do. Now, I want you to imagine what would have happened if you didn't have that training. If God dropped a whole bunch of money on you, you probably would have ran through it just like the lottery winners. And six months from now, you'd be broke again. You know why? You didn't have any Holy Ghost training. Do you see what I mean? I know that's true about marriage. Because if you tell God you want to get married as soon as you pray that prayer and God says yes, then your life's going to get turned upside down like Fresh Prince. Your life's going to get flipped, turned upside down. Why? Because God has to teach you how to submit. Submit to who? Submit to him. Because you can't learn how to build a marriage if you're not in submission to Christ. <clears throat> Christ, excuse me. If you read what God says in Ephesians 5 about the way marriage works, everybody in the family has to be spirit-filled. It starts with Ephesians 5.18. Now, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Right after that, he goes into wives, submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives, 
In Ephesians 6, 1, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. So God tells everybody in the family, you got to be Holy Ghost filled. Husbands, wives, children. And then he goes into how to behave in a family. So first you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and then you do this. That means if you are not Holy Ghost filled, you are not ready for a family. And that's why a lot of people that want to be married are still single. They haven't learned how to submit. You can't build a godly marriage unless you learn how to submit. Okay? I know you don't like it because you think marriage is supposed to work the way you want it to work. But it works the way God designed it to work. And it's never going to work if you're not Holy Ghost filled. That's why you've seen some people and their marriage is just one big argument. That's why you've seen some people and they got them, them out of control, undisciplined children. Because God told you in Ephesians 5.18, before we get to husbands, wives, and children. Okay, I'm going to answer that question in a minute. Hold on. Ask me that again uh, in a minute. Before we get to husbands, wives, and children, you got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. It's as simple as that. Okay, let me answer that question. For those of you on Facebook, she asked me, should I submit to my alcoholic husband? First of all, when you're dealing with alcohol, uh, it says in Ephesians 5.18 not to be drunk with wine. That means your husband's not submitted to the Lord if he's submitted to the alcohol. So what you need to do is you need to go into your mode of intercession. If you're the wife, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go straight to Jesus Christ and tell the Lord that you want to obey him, but it doesn't look like your husband is in line. And the Lord will give you specific instructions in what to do. Because um, when you're dealing with substance abuse, there's three people in the relationship. There's husband, wife, and a substance. And many times that substance is attached to a demon. So if your husband is strung out on alcohol, he needs deliverance. He needs that demon cast out of him. And then he needs detox. And then he needs to submit to Christ. And he needs to be Holy Ghost filled. There's a lot that needs to happen. So the only thing you can do in that situation is go straight to Jesus and ask the Lord for specific instructions. Lord, what should I pray? Lord, what should I say? Lord, how should I behave in this situation? Because that demon needs to be cast out. The detox of the body and the brain needs to happen. He needs to get saved. If he's not saved, he needs to get spirit filled. There's a lot that needs to happen in that situation to make it line up properly. So you have to ask the Lord for specific instructions. What should I do? given the fact that I'm married to a man that's given the alcohol. And the Lord will tell you exactly what to do. And I mean specifically, like what time of the morning to get up and pray, like what to say and what not to say, like a whole bunch of things. The Lord will show you point by point how to behave. That's the answer to your question. Okay? Now, I know there's been a lot of abuse in the past. I know that's why people are, are leery of those kinds of things, because a lot of people have misinterpreted Scripture, because they have religion and not relationship. Whenever you're not sure what to do, and whenever you're not sure which scripture to apply, you ask the Lord, because the Lord is a person. He's not a set of rules. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Religious people is always about rules, always about behavior. Do this, don't do that. Jesus Christ is a person. And if you are in a situation and you don't know what to do, you can go before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I know what your word says, but I'm in this situation and I don't know because I might be trying to submit to somebody that's trying to beat my brains out or they're cheating on me or I don't know what's going on and I don't know what to do. You go to the Lord just like that and tell him how you feel and tell him that I need some instruction to help me learn how to navigate this specific situation I'm in. You see what I mean? That's the difference between religion and relationship. Because I personally know some women that got counseled to submit to a man that was beating them and he blessed near killed her. That's not the will of God. She lived, this particular woman I'm thinking about lived the rest of her life in pain and then ended up, ended up getting a divorce anyway. See, you got to tell people, that, that's why you hear me say it all the time. You got to have your own relationship with Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches in Ephesians 5.18, you be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got to have your own relationship with Christ. So if you get in a situation where people in your family aren't acting biblically, then you can ask the Lord, what should I do in this situation? What is your will for me in this situation? And the Lord will tell you, he will make you to know some kind of way. See what I mean? Okay, so... So that's why the prophetic word of the Lord today is get in perfect sync. Get in perfect sync. The Lord is going to show you what to do to your life, in your life, in every area, 
And you need to be Holy Ghost filled so you can hear what Jesus is saying. And you need to be Holy Ghost filled so you can be empowered to obey Jesus once you hear what he's saying because it's going to take grace. Anything that the Lord tells you to do, he needs to give you the grace to do it. You can't do it on your own. But anytime you hear a command, because remember I told you, I taught you HBO, hear, believe, obey. Anytime you hear the Lord, you're supposed to believe the Lord and then you have to obey the Lord. That's all by his grace. He will give you the power to hear him, believe him, and obey him. You don't have to do it in your own strength. That's the point of being filled with the Holy Ghost. That we don't have to try to serve the Lord or even hear the Lord in our own strength. But we have the third person of the Trinity, the very Spirit of God himself indwelling us to help us hear the Lord, help us believe the Lord, help us obey the Lord. You see that? That's why it's so important to have a relationship and not religion. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Ghost and walk with Jesus every day of your life. Don't be a CME. CME are those Christians that come to church on Christmas Mother's Day and Easter, they come to church three times a year. On Easter, they got that white suit on with that pimping white hat. Because you know when the hat is crooked like that, it's pimping, pimping. It ain't the straight hat, it's this hat right here. It's that pimping white hat. Uh-huh. Three times a year. And people like that are always complaining about, how come I can't get a word from the Lord? How come the, word, the Lord don't talk to me? How come my faith ain't working? Because you can't come to church three times a year. That's like saying I'm only going to eat three times a year. When you have a nice cop salad, when you have a grilled cheese sandwich, when you have a bowl of cereal, you're feeding your clay body. You're, fle you're feeding this. But the word of God, First and Second Corinthians, the book of Joel, Genesis, that's food for your spirit. It's food for your inner man. Okay? It's not complicated. I've seen people struggle my whole life making it harder than it is. You know, as a human being, that if you go so long without food and water, your body's going to start breaking down. you got to eat and drink at some point. Even if you go on an extended fast, you got to feed this clay. you got to feed it. And what do we feed it? We feed it natural food, grapes, oranges, uh, you know, pizza, uh, you know, uh, steak tacos. I mean, whatever you're into, okay? But that's just this part of you, the body, the clay part. Th this part... The breath of life, that's the real you. That's the you that makes the body animate. Because when, when that part leaves, that's when your body goes down to the dust. And we have your funeral and you decompose and we put your body in the ground. Because the breath of life isn't in you anymore. That's your spirit. That food is the Bible. Uh, Revelation, uh, Jonah, Jude, James, uh, Romans, Matthew, Mark, Luke. That's what feeds that. So the Bible is food for my spirit, and hamburgers are food for my body. Do you understand? It never gets any more complicated than that. That's why you can't go to church three times a year and think you're going to get a word from the Lord. That's like having, again, three meals a year and then wonder why you're emaciated and malnourished. You are spiritually malnourished. That's why you can't get a breakthrough. You got to eat every day. You got to get in the Word every day. Just like you have a sandwich or a bunch of cold cereal or a bagel or a glass of orange juice, you have that every day. Even if you only eat one meal a day, you still have it every day. Well, the same is true for your spirit. You understand? So that's why the Lord is saying being a Christian but not being spirit-filled is foolish. You're not in touch with what Jesus is saying and doing. And when he's ready to move on to the next, you're going to be all somewhere outside of the will of God trying to get a word from the Lord because you ain't got no Holy Ghost. And the Lord's going to move on and you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. Once again, I've seen it happen. I'm not, I'm not talking about stuff that's just in theory for me. I've seen people in more than one church miss the move of God and end up stuck somewhere and then you interface with them years later and they're still in the same place. Still talking about the same thing, still arguing over the same stuff because they're not Holy Ghost filled. The Lord moved on and left them behind. And the Lord will do that because he's interested in people that are spirit filled, not people that, that don't want no Holy Ghost, okay? You're going to sing them same songs every day for 30 years and then you're going to die. What a shame, Okay? All right, now I told you when I got through the teaching portion, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to get filled with the Holy Ghost. So here's what to do. It's really, 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 really simple. 
okay? Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is if you've never had deliverance, you are going to have to rebuke and cast out and get broken off of you anything that's from the devil, okay? Before you get Holy Ghost filled, you're going to have to, now I'm assuming you're already saved, so let me back it up, okay? So let me, let me just assume you're not saved at all. Here's how you get saved. You get saved by A, B, C. A, you admit you're a sinner. B, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, sent from heaven, and he died on the cross for your, sin, for your sins and rose again the third, third day. And C, you confess with your mouth what you just believed in your heart. A, B, C. Admit, believe, confess. That's how you get saved. And if you admit you're a sinner, you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on the cross, for your sins rose again the third day, and confess that with your mouth as you're believing it in your heart, then thou art saved. That's how you get saved. It's as simple as that. But that's just the first point. That's like when, when the woman has pushed and pushed and pushed, and then the baby comes out. You just got born again. But there's some stuff that has to happen. You know what happens after a baby's born? You ever notice they suck the mucus off? There's mucus, there's placenta, there's all stuff in the nose, in the eyes. You ever know they clean the baby up? Well, that's what has to happen. As soon as you get saved in the kingdom of God, you got to renounce the devil because you might have come into the kingdom of God carrying some of that old baggage with you. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I renounce Satan in all his ways. I rebuke anything from the occult, any sexual perversion, any unbelief, any condemnation, any bitterness or unforgiveness, any hardness of heart, any sickness or disease, any poverty or lack, or any bloodline curse on my family. I apply the blood of Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, I command all those spirits to come out. And if any of that was operating in your life, you feel it break off you as soon as you say that. Bloodline curses, anything back from your past, anything that you did, anything you've been dabbling in that's not from God, you got to renounce it, denounce it, and cast it out of you in the name of Jesus and put it under the blood. And as soon as you pray that what I just showed you, if you're operating in anything like that, you're going to feel it come off you. You're going to feel it break off you, okay? Now, your vessel is born again and now it's, it's clean, but it's empty. Here's how you get filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? You have to ask God for it, and then you have to praise Him. Okay? So all you have to do is say, Father, in the name of Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your dreams, your desires, your word, your tongues, your visions, your dreams. Fill me now with the Holy Ghost, and I believe I have it in Jesus' name. And then you have to put your hands up, say, Thank you, Jesus. Say, Thank you, Jesus. Begin to praise Him. Say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And as you begin to praise him, you'll feel the Holy Ghost rising up in you. It'll be the most amazing thing. You'll start speaking in tongues. You'll start crying. You'll feel the power of God hit you. You'll feel, uh, feel the fire of God hit you. Okay? So you ask God to be filled with the Spirit. You praise him. You have to praise him. You cannot just ask him to be filled with the Holy Ghost and then not praise him. You have to praise him. And as you praise him, you begin to stir up the Holy Ghost that's in you now. And you'll feel the Holy Ghost manifest right where you are. It's as simple as that. I know some of y'all with churchy backgrounds, you saw them go down to the altar and they put oil all on them and they fell on the floor. Everybody don't react the same way to the Holy Ghost. That doesn't necessarily have to happen. The way you get filled with the Holy Ghost is what I just showed you. You ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost, to fill you with all of his good things. And then you begin to praise him. And as you begin to praise him, and as you lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, you'll feel the Spirit of God begin to bubble up inside of you and give you a witness that you are Holy Ghost filled. See that? That's absolutely right. Some of y'all know that's the first time in your life you've heard that. I've been going to church for 30 years and nobody ever explained it to you. But that's what I'm here to do. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. Anything you want me to pray for or over or against. If there's any kind of spiritual warfare you're doing, we're trying to tear down the kingdom of darkness, we can win through the word of God and the blood of the Lamb and not loving our lives to the death, meaning total commitment. We can win if we get a word from the Lord and we claim the blood of Jesus and we sell out to Christ. We can beat the devil with that, with those principles. Okay? So if you're praying for something or if you're praying against anything or you believe in God for something, if you want me to pray with you, 
put that on the screen right now. Okay? All right, remember I tell you every week that when you see me close my eyes and start to speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost if there's anybody out there that needs physical healing, please pray against stress and heart health. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you on behalf of Sally, oh God. I add my faith to hers, and I command her heart. Sally, put your hand on your heart and say, I command that heart to be every whit whole. Oh God, I ask you to bring order in her life because the reason she's stressed out, anger, the reason she's stressed out, because she's out of balance. She's out of sync with you, oh God. She's not doing everything you're telling her to do. So in the name of Jesus, I speak order in her life, oh God. Speak to her, oh God, and let her show the things she needs to let go of and the things she needs to pick up, oh God, so she can get back in order and relieve that stress and anxiety and walk in peace and joy every day. In Jesus' name, we believe it. Amen. If you're stressed out all the time and all that is because you're out of sync with what the Lord is telling you to do. So you have to ask the Lord, show me which stuff, Lord, to cut, which stuff or which people to cut out of my life so I can get back in balance. Okay? All right. Any other prayer requests? Put them up. Otherwise, I'm going to, we're going to talk about physical healing. We're going to uh, talk about cast out demons. And we're going to talk about finances. I'm going to ask the Holy Ghost, does he have any words specifically for anybody watching me now? Okay? Okay, uh, this, this happened last week, but the Holy Ghost is telling me the same thing again. Somebody out there, it's your left eye. Okay, there's pain in your left eye. Put your hand on your left eye and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my eye, my eyeball, my eye socket, my cornea, and my iris to be every whit whole. I command every part of my eye to come into alignment with the word of God, that by his stripes I was healed. Okay, by his stripes I was healed. And you'll feel the power of God begin to move in that eye. And make that eye every whit whole. Okay? Okay, the Lord is saying somebody out there has got some knee problems. Put both your hands on both your knees and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak life to my knees. I speak life to my joints, my muscles, my tendons, my bones, my ligaments. And everything that my knee is made up of, every part of my knee and my kneecap, I speak life to you. And I command you to come in line with the word of God that says, by his stripes, I was healed. And I command my knees to be 100% whole and, and have strength to carry the weight of my body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, I felt power growing my knees as I said that. Sure did. And if people, if people don't believe, that's their loss. They're going to miss out on their healing. Because Jesus died to heal you. If you don't believe that, then that's not on the Lord. Okay, I don't feel any particular leading towards a demonic influence, but I do feel a leading about finances. What God is saying to us about finances is that my pastor said it this morning, it's a season of extraordinary favor. It's a season where God is going to open up financial doors. So those of you that have been ready, been, been being gotten ready, that's why the last several years have been so rough. God's been teaching you discipline, but God is ready to break open. I see a burst. Like, like a burst of fruit, like grapes, like sweet fruit and sweet fruit juice. I see God in the Spirit ready to burst open on you a new, fresh flow of finances. And God is saying, be disciplined, be a good steward. Be ready to receive the sweetness that I bring on you financially right now in Jesus' name. Wow. That's awesome. That's always awesome when God says, it's time for some new money. How is that a bad day? <laughs> Woo, Lord. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I need to release before we wrap up. I call it a picture of grapes today. Amen. All right, so remember, uh, I'm on every week at 2.30. Please like and share this video. You can watch the replay on Facebook Live, Periscope, or YouTube. Uh, now, I had some problems with my uploads on my No More Genies, so I'm going to do it tonight. So I'm going to do a No More Genies broadcast at about 7 o'clock tonight. OK, because I want to get the one for March in and it still isn't up yet. So I'm just going to do live tonight. So if you can tune in live tonight, I'll be on from seven to eight. And then uh, it'll also be up on uh, my Facebook page and on my Twitter account and on YouTube. OK, so check that out. Uh, because we all need to destroy our genie concept of God. 
Okay? And the last thing I want to say is, remember, if you want to find me online, always look up David Taylor, hashtag PDT. Prophet David Taylor, hashtag PDT. Because there's other ministry leaders out there named David Taylor. There's a famous bass player named David, David Taylor. So if you want to look me up, look up Prophet David Taylor, but always include the hashtag, hashtag PDT. That's how I tag everything I do so you know it's me. Okay? All right. God bless you. Have a great rest of your afternoon. I'm going to give me some grub because I'm hungry. And uh, then I'll be back on at 7 o'clock tonight to do my No More Genies for the month of March since I missed the last Thursday with them upload problems. But the devil is alive. We're still going to get it in. I don't know how to find you on Amazon. On Amazon, uh, I'm David Taylor II. Um, uh, that's my author name, David Taylor II. Now, I do have some prophetic books coming out this year. So I will let you know when I have my prophetic books. Yeah, uh, on Amazon, just look me up, David Taylor II. You can Google David Taylor II, and my Amazon author page will be the first page that comes up to find my, my regular books there. Yeah. But I do have some prophetic books that is coming out this year. So when I release them, I'll be sure to let you know and be sure to put the links on my Facebook page and my Twitter and my YouTube so you can, so you can get them. Okay? All right, God bless you. Thank you so much for those of you that tuned in live. I feel honored and privileged to be used of the Lord, and I'm happy to be in the prophetic flow. And I want to stay spirit-filled so I can stay in sync with Jesus. And so those of you that can, tune in tonight at 7 o'clock, and I'll be doing my No More Genies for March. And then uh, it'll be a good day, okay? All right, God bless you. Remember that you have an opportunity before you to get in the perfect sync with Jesus. Take advantage of it and walk in that way. God bless.